This is a breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Banditry has become an enterprise making millions from the abduction of victims. They use lots of the money to buy more weapons and then reinforce and strengthen their capacity to continue what they are doing. The Nigerian government, the Niger state government, I beg your pardon, says over 60 motorcycles, unspecified number of cows and arms were recovered from terrorists, and at least 200 people, uh, 200 bandits have been killed in Niger state in the past days by operatives of the Joint Force Task Force in Rafi and Marag, local government areas in uh, the in a Gondwa. Now, a total of 60 motorcycles were recovered, and an uncertain number of cattle were also returned to their owners. Meanwhile, the Niger state government in a report says that bandits have taken over 12 local government areas in Niger state, and no fewer than seven communities have been submerged in flooding in Shiruru local government area due to the ongoing construction of the hydroelectric power station in the state. We're being joined by security expert Yawuzo Getso this morning to make sense of all of this. Now, um, the Niger state has 25 local government, and out of 25, you have 12 being occupied, dominated by bandits. Yawuzo Getso, just recently the government said that they had killed 20, according to the reports that we have, uh, 20 bandits have been killed. Uh, and now we hear that, uh, you know, 12 local governments out of 25, it's in uh, the control of these bandits. Is this not an irony? An irony. But as far as I'm concerned, it is the government that is fueling this crisis. I consider government responsible. I consider the people on power responsible. And I consider the security operatives responsible and I consider the federal government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria as uh, incapable and uh, unserious and uh, 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 um, not really ready to fight the, this, the insurgents. Why? Because I had made mention time without number that one, the kidnapping business and um, uh, uh, um, other criminal uh, crim criminalities that is happening in the Northwest and North Central, uh, particularly that of Niger states, um, the criminals are known, the criminals' location is known, their hideout is known, and this activity started from one community out of uh, a, a many number of communities in the 25 number of local governments, as you mentioned. When it started, we have had a number of programs and a number of clarion call, and we have provided free services, expert services, at no cost to the government, through local and international media, providing professional, ethical norms and values and guidance, and patriotic approaches for how to deal with this situation. I want to tell you that I have been telling the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that there is no location of bandits that is not known to me. There is no location of bandits that is not known to the councillors, that is not known to the local government chairman, that is not known to the members of the state assemblies, and that is not known to the members of the National Assembly, and that are not known to the members of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And at the same time, I want to tell you, if you don't know, let me tell you the architectural st structure that we have as far as formal and informal security structure that we have in all parts of northern Nigeria and in all parts of the country in Nigeria. One, we have community leaders that we call ward heads. We have community leaders that we call district heads. We have community leaders that we call village heads. So all these village heads collect information through the other informal and formal structures, generate this information and deliver it to the white heads every day and every now and then. That is one. This white heads used to meet with the district head whenever there is a serious intelligence information, either serious or unserious. They normally provide this information to the district head. And in almost all the political wards, 774 political wards, and likewise, especially in Niger State, which is the subject matter, there are 
outpost here and there, at least in each local government, besides the divisional police office, you have other outskirts uh, police, what is called outpost. That is a police uh, outpost in the, in, the, in the political wards and other uh, communities that are large. So, and at the same time, you have what is called, you have four prime, primary sources of information, sources of intelligence, sources of operating or operations, sources of uh, making sure that uh, they provide a, a, a kind of um, policing to ensure security of life and properties in all the locations. In, there is no local government that you don't have divisional police officer. There is no local government that you don't have the LSO, that is the local security officer, who is the representative of the DSS. There is no local government that you don't have a commanding officer of the civil defense. And there is no local government where you don't have uh, an immigration officer in, in, who is in charge of that local government. This, among others, including the special tax force, including the joint tax force, including the special marshals and special co, as well as the uh, uh, civil uh, 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 vigilante, they work harmoniously in addressing and attending to ensuring prov provision of security of lives and property. So how comes, even at a time when Nigerians are suffering from getting the fuel, when Nigerians are finding are staying two, three nights at the fueling station, even in Abuja here where I'm talking to you, before we get fuel, how comes the bandits are getting fuel to fuel their vehicles, 200 motorci motor motorcycles, 60 motorcycles, 150 motorcycles, and move, travel, and drive a ride between one kilometer to 60 kilometer to 100 kilometer to go and conduct their activities successfully and pull out. All right. Uh, Yahoo, Yahoo's I get to inter interesting point you've raised. An interesting point you've raised about uh, the bandits being able to fuel their motorcycles to drive many kilometers to go wreck havoc. And, um, uh, you know, we're talking about banditry. Before now, what's Boko Haram and Iswap? Um, let's just get a sense of who are these bandits. Two weeks ago, we had bandits killed at about 19, 18 or 19 soldiers and six or seven police officers in Kebi State when they attacked the convoy no less than, of no less a person than the, the deputy governor of Kebi State. Who are these bandits and how did they get so powerful? And thank you very much for this question. Um, as a criminal and criminality therapist of our West African forest, as well as the expert on uh, security, intelligence, and investigation, I want to reveal, I want to tell you that bandits are those mostly members of those communities that are, are, are most of them Fulani, that uh, pick up arms as a result of their cattle that have been rustled and uh, injustice from the government and judiciary, as well as the security operatives. And um, this started uh, many years ago uh, because time may not allow us to uh, give the, 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 the full history of what happened. But uh, uh, we call them, most of them are Fulani, uh, Heightsmen. And um, I want to tell you that 99.9% uh, .9 of these bandits are Nigerians. And um, while 99.9% .9 of those who are bringing arms to them, who are importing arms to these guys, are foreigners, the armed traders, 80%, uh, if not more than that, are Nigerians. Uh, the armed transporters, 99.9% uh, .9 are Nigerians. The armed movers, 99.9% .9 are Nigerians. And uh, these bandits are members of our communities in all parts of northern Nigeria. That is in the northwest, in the northeast, and uh, in, the, in the north central. And 99% um, of them are known to the communities they are attacking. So they are relating. It's not that they are new or they are coming from far away or as proclaimed by the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria through the Minister of Information uh, sometimes back and uh, many times as uh, to the statement credited by many other principals of the government of Buhari administration that the bandits are foreigners. Uh, it is really not true. Bandits are Nigerians. Bandits are citizens and indigents of Niger state, of Sokoto state, of Zampara state, of Kaduna state, of all the states where they are operating. Okay. So these are the bandits. 
and they are in possession of more sophisticated arms than what is obtainable in the hands of the Nigerian army, more sophisticated and more dangerous arm and weapons than what is obtainable in the hands of all the security operatives in Nigeria, in Nigeria, to our surprise, the inability of the government, lack of, part, lack of passion and lack of interest for the life, protection of life and property of common man, that is what is promoting or have promoted. Because uh, the activity of the bandits started from the remotest part of the, of the communities in northern Nigeria, in Niger State, it started from one local government and one community, and we have one sovereignly. Yeah, who's uh, get so? Information uh, to the government to do the needful in order to deal with the situation, but inability of the government, incapability as exhibited, a realistic and practical term that government is incapable of dealing with situation or government is part of the process or activities of the bandits and other criminalities in the forest. Yahuza Getso, uh, the Niger state government has also given uh, some reason why the, the activities of this bandit, uh, despite uh, efforts being made to ensure that this menace is taken away, has been on the increase. They've talked about the conventional security architecture that you know these, the country actually has, and the fact that it makes vulnerable some of these communities. For instance, the response time, and so you find out that some communities are in isolation. Before uh, you know, security personnel gets this alert that you have bandits around, it takes three to four hours before they can actually get there. Now, don't you think that this should also be um, you know, an issue of concern? I disagree with that. Why? Because I told you in each and every local government there used to be a uh, police, poli uh, divisional police office. There used to local be. Local security officer. You said uh, there used uh, to be. Yeah, divisional police office, local security officer as a representative of the DSS, civil defense commandant, immigration in charge of the local government. And there used to be a meeting in all the 774 local governments in Nigeria every month, which is called monthly security meeting where hard-earned money, uh, taxpayers' money are being used for replenishment. Taxpayers' money are being used for transportation to the district heads, to the ward heads, to the uh, police uh, officers, and everybody who is attending the monthly review meeting. So if this is happening, and if a simple criminality will be, uh, 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 the, the politicians are using it and conducting elections successfully and delivering a, 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 a polling box and every other material successfully and peacefully to all the remote areas. How comes they are saying or they are proclaiming that uh, they cannot access some of these communities? It means that is exposing their negligence. That is exposing that uh, is on seriousness. That is exhibition of incapability. That is demonstrating and practically the government is making it very clear that they cannot Nigerian government under Buhari's watch is not serious, is not committed, and is not capable of managing the, the security of life and property. So then, if they cannot provide security for life and property, how can they tell us that uh, some of the communities are hard to reach? Where are the hard to reach communities? How are they delivering the, the polling boxes? How are they delivering the election materials? How are they delivering uh, their messages, key messages for uh, when, when they wanted to be voted? How have they across all these communities when they were campaigning in the 2014, 2013, 2015, and 2019 uh, before the elections. So this is all realistic. These are uh, 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 kind of uh, uh, sh uh, shady excuses that cannot be accepted by us. We know all these communities. There is nowhere in northern Nigeria, no community, no settlement, no hard to reach terrain that I don't know. Where are the difficult places? Where, what is the importance of communication between the divisional police officer and the state commander of the police? What is the importance of the communication between the controller of the immigration and the, contro the, the, the immigration staff of the local government? What is the importance of the communication between the commanding officer, the state commandant of the, of the civil defense, and that of the commanding officer at of the local government? What are they doing there? So how are they communicating? And why uh, 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 does that mean, if that is the case, then government should come out and tell us that they don't have facilities, they don't have equipment, they are not ready, they are, then the government should resign. The, 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 whosoever should, should get out of the office. 
That's, that's the reality. Yeah, who's you know, uh, we, we, We're always saying from. Yeah, yeah, Getso, we don't, yeah, Mr. Getso, we're always seeing from these um, uh, these reports. Um, it may it may sort of paint the wrong picture if you're not careful of what is going on in Niger State, and uh, it may threaten to uh, overshadow the successes that have been recorded in the fight against banditry and insurgency in the north northern part of the country because um, I think a governor of, of Bello State, San, of, of Niger State, Sandy Bello, did mention it a couple of days ago when he visited an internally displaced persons camp that they've recorded some successes. For instance, if you look at three days ago, uh, a joint security task force in that same Niger State, state uh, killed uh, at least 100 suspected bandits in an operation at Bangi village in Mariga, local government area of, of Niger State. And you have other such killings of, of bandits and uh, criminals in in, in Niger State. So uh, are we not uh, being unfair to the government of Nigeria when we, we take these reports and do not look at the successes recorded in, in the fight against uh, uh, criminality in that part of the country? Let me tell you, all these are political deceit. The governor's statement is a political deceit. The federal government's statement, if they are in support of that, is a, is a political deceit. I have told you, and I have said it time without number, and I'm going to repeat myself once again. There is no location of the bandit that is not known to us. When I say us, I mean the Sunny Bello himself. I mean all the districts. I mean all the emirs of Kontagora, the emir of, uh, uh, of Mina, the emir of Bida, and all other emirs. I mean all the districts. I mean all the white heads. I mean all the councillors. I mean all the National Assembly and State Assembly members. I mean all the three senators from Niger State. And I mean all the police working in Niger State. And I mean all the DSS working in Niger State. And I mean all the immigration and the military working in Niger State. Let me tell you one thing. Do you know that we have an Air Force training school in Niger State and very close to where these bandits are operating? What is the essence of the barracks that we have in Niger State? What is the essence of the police command? And I said it, and I'm repeating myself, and I'll repeat myself, that the location and hideout of all these criminals are known. And all these bandits, their commanders are known, their relatives are known, their locations is known. It's not, they are not in the hidden ha, 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 Have you, just a quick one, a quick one, yeah, who's that gets to a very quick one. The commissioner of police uh, in, in Niger State, Bala Kurias, is saying that the rural dwellers and those affected should not hesitate to report to the nearest security outfits any person or group of people uh, uh, who they may know may have a, a link with this. So have you reported, gone to the, the security agencies, even if the DSS to say, I have information? Very quickly, please. I think the order of a who's that gets to in this, and on this, not only to Niger State Governor, even to the DIG, to the DS, DG SSS, the IGP, the, uh, the DG NIA, I had met them one on one. Let me tell you, I'm not just yeah, telling so the yeah, story. So we, we have to let you I have met them so one for being part on of one, the show. eyeball to eyeball. And I have mentioned Yeah, who's that get so? Uh, I'm, I'm really sorry, we have to let you go. Uh, uh, we know where they are. The councillors know where they are. Thank, thank you. Yeah, who's that So we have to, we have to go. Thank you very much. So you said you've done that already, and uh, we want to appreciate your time uh, this morning on the program. Thank you, Edwin. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and all the best um, in Abuja. Uh, Mercy, it's, it's quite a passionate um, a response from him. I mean, people are suffering over that part in that part of the country and they are displaced in Niger State. People can't stay in their communities, in their homes, in their villages. It's really, really sad indeed. Well, we'll just uh, bring you this latest report. Uh, there's a letter that is uh, making the rounds. It's no longer a secret where you have uh, the letter saying, uh, notice, 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 and this is last warning. It talks about saying that uh, we, the unknown gunmen, has concluded that from now on henceforth there will be no residing of the national anthem or the national pledge in any school and any gathering. That's the letter there, but I'm not sure if you can actually see that. But um, uh, we do have a resident from Imo State, if I'm not mistaken, Kelechi, who will be speaking from us uh, right uh, away from Oweri. Kelechi, it's good to have you join us this morning. Uh, can you quickly tell us about this letter and what does the letter say? Okay, good morning. Good morning. We got the information that 
‫לייצר לכל Kalachi, can you hear us, please? Unfortunately, uh, we have uh, one able to have a smooth connection with Kalichi, but as soon as we have all of the details, and of, of course, we would have that reconnection, but that's the much that we can do at, at this point in time. Uh, we hope that, uh, you know, everything would actually be uh, all together, everything would be one. We constantly have faith in the entity called Nigeria, and we all have a responsibility to, to play. Well, that's the much that we can take if you missed out on any part of the conversation. It's all right to um, follow the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at so Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. I am Messi Boko. Thanks for watching. And I'm Kofi Bartel Saab. We'll be back tomorrow right here. Keep watching Plus TV Africa.